Welcome back, I am John P. Before we get started, let's play a little game. Think about Breitling watches, right? Breitling as a brand. What is Breitling known for? What is kind of the theme of Breitling watches? I'll give you a second. Google it if you want to. Did you guess airplanes? If you did, you're wrong. Actually, Breitling now is a surfing company, right? Uh, if you've been following this channel, you know that I talk about Breitling a lot more than I used to and a lot more than the market used to. And Breitling has been changing a lot and they've been introducing this kind of surfboard theme, uh, which obviously I sound a little bit biased on, but after I Googled it, it turns out that surfing is apparently the fastest growing kind of enthusiast sport out there with over something like 23 million and growing everyday number of surfers in the world. So I was actually pretty surprised. So maybe it's a little bit smarter than I thought kind of transitioning from planes to surfing. Uh, but nonetheless, Breitling has been doing this, but what I want to, um, you know, after that little exercise here, what I want to talk about today is a recent release Breitling just unveiled. They don't follow the unveiling schedules that everyone else does. Breitling is blazing their own trails, riding their own wave, if you will. Uh, they have a new Super Ocean watch that I want to share with you. I think there is one colorway, an example, and size. It comes in so many different variations, but there's one that I think is actually really great. And the rest, I'm going to share with you my, my thoughts and opinions on those and why I think Breitling just narrowly missed the mark and they almost nailed it on this one. Before we do that, on the wrist today, I have my Breguet Classique. Very cool watch. You can see more about this watch and others that I wear, um, as well as behind the scenes of Delray Watch on my Instagram, the real John P. And do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com, where I think we do have some Breitling watches in stock, but we have basically every brand, so uh, it wouldn't be hard to do. So what is the watch in question? Breitling just announced a new Super Ocean watch. The Super Ocean is their dive watch, right? They have the Heritage, which they've kind of been revamping over the last few years, and they've come out with some very cool ones, including the Rainbow, as well as the um, some of the more limited additions for professional surfers, things like that. I think they've done a great job with Super Ocean 57, uh, but now they came out with the Super Ocean, kind of their Super Ocean Professional, which has been their dive watch, but on their website, they're saying it's no longer a dive watch, even though it has a dive bezel. Uh, I, I don't want to take it in that direction. It's it seems like they're they're turning the watch line to kind of a one size fits all, regardless of the fact that it's made for diving. It has a diving bezel on it, and it has Super Ocean in the name. But they came out with a new version of the watch, and if you look at the pictures here that we'll be showing, you go to the Breitling website. It is a pretty big change. Just by looking at it, you can tell that they really did put serious time into redesigning aesthetically this watch. Now, it's supposed to be modeled after uh, a very particular, rare, obscure reference in Breitling's back catalog. Now, Breitling has been doing this with their other models, right? They've done this with the Premier line. They've done this uh, with some of their chronographs, the top time, uh, for example, and they've drawn from their vintage watches in modern uh, vari uh, iterations, really, of these, these watches to, to really show collectors that they're not abandoning their heritage and, you know, they, they want to be uh, what Breitling once was and kind of ignore this huge gap in the middle, this 10-year plus, really, stint of their watch is kind of falling by the wayside. So they've done that and they've come out with the Super Ocean watch in the 46 size, the 44 size, the 42 size, and the 36 size. So in the middle, in millimeters, 46, 44, 42, and 36. That's a lot of sizes. Starting out with this big watch, which Breitling kind of was known for, and ending up in the 36, which they used to call a ladies. Now it's just a, a smaller size. But interestingly enough, they have so many variations of this watch. They have a bronze, they have a turquoise, go figure, or the Tiffany blue. They have an orange, they have a green, and so many other combinations of the straps, the bracelets, uh, the rubber straps. And that's something Breitling has really been uh, investing in is the ability to change your straps and put it on a NATO or a, a nylon strap, things like that. And Breitling has really done that. Now, this particular watch, spec-wise, uh, you know, really, regardless of the size, does have 
you know, quality behind it. And it does seem from a technical perspective to be a pretty great watch, right? I mean, it is using an ETA movement, which I can't say anything necessarily negative about this because Breitling's been using ETA for pretty much its entirety of the company. Uh, but it's an ETA 2824, which they call the Breitling B17. 2824, a little bit modified, but that is what it is. And now it only has about a 38 hour power reserve. So compared to something like the Rolex Submariner that has a 70 hour power reserve and the Seamaster from Omega, the Seamaster 300M has about a 50 hour power reserve. So you're getting a lot less hours in terms of reserve. But I think what Breitling is going for is a watch that someone is going to be wearing every day. And if you wear it every day, the power reserve doesn't really matter that much because 38 hours is more than one day, right? So even if you put it down to go to sleep, unless you're in a coma, you're probably going to be okay. But that could actually happen uh, if you are a surfer because it's kind of dangerous to an extent, right? So that specific situation is not covered, but elsewise, uh, or it's just not that bad, right? It's not bad. Nothing can be bad can be said about that. It's not the greatest, but it's acceptable. It's an out of movement. Now, Rolling on for the specs on this, I think it's pretty interesting that the watch does have what many collectors complain from other brands, right? Even with my Aquaterra uh, that I have over the on a desk over there, the Aquaterra has this butterfly clasp that many collectors complain about because it doesn't have a micro adjustment on it. But Breitling touts this this kind of new clasp that will allow, or a new version of of their clasp that will allow for up to fifteen millimeters in size difference uh, between the whole adjustments and taking links or putting uh, taking links out or putting links in. And I think that's pretty great, right? 15 millimeters uh, is like three quarters of a strap width of a Rolex sub, for example. So that is pretty great. I think that's pretty awesome. Now I'll have to, to see the clasp in the flesh and see how it really works out. It's probably chunky of a clasp, but they're selling 46 millimeter dive watches. So for me, it might not work, but for a, an average to a larger size wrist, I think this is something to be excited about. Now, what's probably the best thing about this watch, you know, before I'll get into the criticisms, because I have to, I, uh, I do have to kind of mention my thoughts on this watch with the exception of one version of it. Um, the price is only $4,850, right? $4,850. And so that really does get you into watches that are getting up there in terms of branching away from entry level, right? We're talking 5,000 US dollars, but it's that's going to be less than the Omega Seamaster 300M. And that's going to be about half the price of a Rolex Submariner at retail, if you can get one at retail. But um, the secondhand market has come down a little bit at the time of shooting of this video. So yeah, you know, about half the price of a sub, you can get one of these and you can get it in so many different variations. And it's supposed to be a watch that's made to go hit the ocean, and actually wear and use according to Breitling. So I think that's actually pretty great. Now, we have to talk about the styling. I have to. This is something uh, that I look at this watch and I look at the pictures. Now, full disclosure, I have not seen it in the flesh. Maybe it wears differently. Sometimes watches do that. I'm surprised all the time at Delray Watch. When we get a watch in, I thought it would wear a certain way and it didn't. It does happen. But when I look at pictures of this watch, it's so busy. The watch is just busy. The contrast, it looks like a bullseye. Now I get their drawing from vintage. It's vintage inspired and it's supposed to add some depth. Maybe in real life it will. And it's supposed to be legible, right? Think of the Breitling Endurance. They're kind of making these watches so that it's very legible in action. Look at the big hands. I can see it while I'm riding a wave. That makes sense if, that, if that's actually what you're using it for. But for the average person wearing a dive watch to their office, I don't know that you know, this makes a lot of sense with, with maybe the proportions on this watch, right? When I look at some of these, these photos, it's so busy. Uh, there's so much contrast, right? The black and white version, it's black, it's white, it's black, it's white. It goes on and on into the depths of the dial, getting down to that smaller inner dial. And then when you get into the color versions of the watch, you have like this tiny turquoise or orange inner dial that in my opinion, just kind of looks a little bit off. It's like there's too much going on. It's very busy. That, you know, the dark black along with the turquoise, I think is kind of clashing in a way, right? You're drawn into the depths of the black, but at the same time, that blue is kind of supposed to catch your eye and you're supposed to stay looking at that. Now, 
you know, I'm not a professional artist, but that's just kind of the way that I, at least I am perceiving the watch when I look at it. And as I think about it, you know, when I wear watches, I like to kind of peer down and, and kind of throughout the day when I check the time, I want to actually look at my watch and kind of have it be simple and enjoy it or something interesting about it. And when I look at these dials, unfortunately, you're just hit with all of these like thick, thick hands and thick numbers and everything. And it's just so much going on. And that's just what I think about it now. I will say that I think the blue in the off-white version of this watch has much less contrast than all the other versions. So I do think that they really knocked it out of the park with this specific version of it, right? If you look at this, this picture here, there's not as much contrast as the other. It doesn't really look like that bullseye kind of thing. It's almost like one of those pictures that they used to show online where you look at a picture and it looks like it's moving, right? It's just with the way that the contrast is handled, the watches kind of remind me of that, those pictures that are supposed to look moving and make, make you dizzy. Maybe I'll put a picture here if you haven't seen one of those. They were so big uh, the early days of the internet. But the white and the blue, I like it. I think it's actually pretty cool. Um, I do think the number of sizes of the watch maybe are not the size choices maybe are not the best. I would like to see a 40 millimeter in this watch. I think 40 to 41 is kind of that hot standard dive watch size. 42 starts getting a little bit too big for the seven uh, inch wrist down below crew, myself included. I don't want to call myself uh, the captain of that crew, but I'll, I'll lead the charge if I have to. They need to come out with this watch in a 40 millimeter. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, but that, that's kind of what I see Breitling doing, right? So I do really think that SpecWise is going to be a great watch, great value in terms of pricing, but the design, the colors, it almost seems like they're trying to do too much, right? Oh, we have a turquoise watch. Oh, but we have a bronze watch. We have an orange watch. Uh, we have a new dive watch. We have every size. It's all, um, not to mention Breitling has done the, the watch rental program. They've done the strap uh, subscription programs. Now they have the NFTs. Register your NFTs. Oh, we're a surfing company. We're a plane company. We have every combination. We have this color. We have that color. We have chronographs. We have dive watches. It's kind of like an infomercial where they say, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. And it never really ends with Breitling. And I think most of the time they've been doing such a great job. But unfortunately, I think this one here with this Super Ocean needs to have just a couple of subtle tweaks uh, if they do want this watch model to be long-standing and take them into the future with the Breitling Super Ocean line. I think if they take that off-white uh, variation, modify a little bit, make it a little bit more easy on the eyes, maybe trim down a millimeter here or there, I think they really could have a contender for a dive watch to truly compete with Omega with the Seamaster, as well as the Rolex Submariner. What do you guys think about this new Super Ocean? I would love to see it and hear it in the comments below. Truly, please chime in the comments below because I wanna know if I'm the one here that just thinks it's a little bit of a dizzying uh, aesthetic to the watch. Leave that down below. Also, please do not forget to check out delraywatch.com as well as my Instagram, The Real John P. Thanks guys, you've been chatting with John P.